when I made the film in 2019, that was three years after we left Aleppo. Um, and you can see the main word I have. We've never thought that the world would let this happen. Um, unfortunately, years later now, we're talking about natural disaster. Uh, and the world response is very shameful. Um, just commenting on what Abdurrahman said when he said, I think we've done a good job. This is not a good job. This is miracles. What you are doing are miracles. The white helmet, we had all the workers on, in Syria and around the world who are supporting these people. Um, that's unbelievable work. It's impossible mission and they've done more than what they can do. So we're on, we're in awe to what you've done. Five years I lived in Aleppo and I've been through a lot. I was scared so many times, so many times I thought I will never make it. But I can tell you, just talking with someone in Syria at the first week of that earthquake just felt unimaginable. I couldn't imagine how much the fear, I couldn't imagine how people, even in south of Turkey, in Gaziantep or Antakya, how they were just going through what, 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 what was happening. You can imagine someone who was always under dangerous situation. Um, now I'm safe. My family, my parents, my sister with eight weeks baby and my brother were in Gaziantep when the earthquake happened. And I just felt so uh, helpless, so hopeless at the same time. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how can I help. Um, and I think so many Syrians around the world felt the same. I was lucky again, and my family were safe. They spent the first week in the car in Gaziantep, as Dr. Salah said, as so many other families. But they were OK. They were, they were alive. But unfortunately, these numbers, which we hear around the news, it's not just numbers. We know so many people, so many people who made it out of Aleppo. They couldn't make it because of this earthquake. Fadi was my friend in Aleppo. He was my neighbor. Fadi was in Syria when the earthquake happened. He survived the earthquake. He was OK. But he lost eight of his family member in Antakya. And yesterday, I sent him a message. I told him, I'll be here. I will speak. Can I mention your family? Can I talk about them? I was very hesitated to ask that question, but I felt like I have to do that. Hey, Wad, thank you. I wish I can record, but my voice is letting me down. Of course, I want everyone to know them. I want them to stay alive, even when they are not. Honestly, I don't know what I want to say or where I should start, or where I should finish. My mom was a very caring mom. She considered all of us, me, my friend, all the activists of Aleppo, as her children. She used to cook very well, and she used to cook a lot for so many people. When one of our friends got attacked by the Russian and the Syrian regime bombs, he and his wife had to leave Aleppo. My mom insists to live with his wife, to be with her, so she can't be alone. And that's why my mom and the rest of my family left Aleppo after the first siege. My father refused to leave. He wanted to stay, and he was helping in distribu distributing aid in our neighborhood. Yaman, my, my brother, he worked with me in so many films I've done. He survived the chemical weapon. He also did the last film we did together, was about childhood, the lost childhood in Syria. This film was about to finish, but Yaman told me that his baby, Taim, is starting to say Baba for the first time. So he wanted to leave Syria to go to his family in Turkey and see them. Yaman, my other brother, he was a very quiet person. He faced so much racism in Turkey, but he was never told us what happened until one day, one day, his teacher came and told us that 
bunch of boys at school, they used to beat him every single day. Yamin wanted to be a football player. He wanted to play for, for the Syrian team one day. These people are just one family. So can you imagine how many people you could know? How many people you could, you lived with? How many people, like, they can't even continue their life normally after what happened. And they need every support. They need every help, every possible help. Sometimes a word could really heal. And nothing could maybe bring the people who we lost, the people who are not alive anymore. But at least we could ease some of these people pain. So please, we need every help. We need the Syrian voices to be out. We need our heroes, the white helmet, the doctors, the volunteers who worked days and nights to be at least proud of what, the, what we've done, what they've done. We are so proud of you, and the least we can do is just to feel proud of what the amazing work doctors, nurses, white helmets people are doing every single day.